I'm a man who likes dark and interesting things. Obviously, when I reviewed Agony, I was looking forward to a dark and brooding game, but I just got an absolute turd. But I've always been interested in horror-related things. I wasn't a goth kid or anything growing up, although I did have an unhealthy obsession with Coal Chamber at one point in time, but I've always enjoyed dark things, such as vampires. Vampires are really cool, and I always enjoy vampire movies. I'm even a huge fan of Dracula 2000, and don't laugh, because that's a good movie. The plot twist in it was excellent. Stop laughing! It's a good movie! Anyways, Vampire is a game that recently released on the Xbox One, the PS4, and Steam, and it looked like a game that I would be interested in. Playing a sort of action RPG game where you are a vampire, and you can upgrade your skills and really terrorize a town if you choose to do that. So I got a review copy of Vampire sent over for me, and I've been playing the game, and I have some interesting things to say about it. I think the game has a lot of good things going on for it, and I could definitely foresee it being a future hidden gem, if that makes any sense. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, Channel, and let's review Vampire for the Xbox One, the PS4, and Steam, and talk about why I think it's a future hidden gem for the platforms. Hey, RGT85, hey Sean. Oh my god, it's Stevie Richards! So Vampire has you playing as a character named Jonathan Reed, who is a doctor. It is 1918, and the Spanish flu is going throughout London, and there's a lot of people that are sick, and a lot of weird things going on in London. And you essentially have a very weird thing that happens to you at the very start of the game, where you lose a family member that pretty much sets the tone for the game, and sort of shows you what sort of game this is going to be like, because yes, you are indeed a vampire. So that's part of the story as well. You're basically learning how you became a vampire, what the this means for you and how it'll shape your world. Now that's sort of one of the interesting points of the game is sort of balancing between being a human and a vampire because as the game progresses you can sort of go between these two different areas and do different things with it. As the game starts to open up more you realize that this is an action RPG game where your choices have consequences. So if you decide to embrace your vampire side and start taking out innocent people that will actually affect the towns that you are put in. Now the game is sort of an open world situation with each area having different characters in there, citizens that have different meters and whatnot. And you basically can learn about these characters. You can basically learn secrets about these characters to sort of extort them. And there's a lot of interesting things. By talking to different characters within the cities, you learn different things about different people. Now, I'd say the game is sort of open world, but it's a sort of linear open world. There's not a whole lot going on because of the obvious vampirisms and a lot of people being sick. Because a lot of people think it's just the flu. So a lot of towns and boroughs and whatnot don't have a lot of action going on with them just feral creatures that are infected with different things so as the game progresses you start to realize what this game is all about like I said it's an action RPG where your choices have consequences basically throughout the maps are different hideout locations and in these hideout locations you can use your experience gained throughout the game to sort of upgrade Jonathan and I really like that about the there's a lot of different things to upgrade from simple things like your health and stamina meter to different vampire traits basically you can uh, bite different characters that when you're in combat and drain their blood and the blood allows you to the higher your blood meter is the more things you can do the more attacks you can do and by leveling up different things on the skill tree you get access to more attacks and you can really open up your character and make them tailor suited to you you don't really have to play the game as a vampire there's multiple endings in the game there's multiple ways for the game to play out so if you want to play as a sadistic vampire and just take out everyone you can do that if you'd rather choose the more human path and you know actually try to be a doctor you can do that and I really like that about the game also at the hideout locations you can also customize your items that you pick up throughout the game such as guns and uh, different melee weapons and stuff and that's a cool thing as well because you can really upgrade those things and make fun situations out of them I really have this cool dagger that I like using in battle right now you have your main attack which is an attack that actually hurts characters and then a stun attack and basically different characters within the game that you combat have different different weaknesses. Some people are weaker to gunshots than melee attacks and vice versa. When you stun someone multiple times, uh, their stun meter goes down and then you can bite them, thus giving you blood to do the vampire attacks in the game. So there is a level of strategy in the combat. As far as the combat is concerned, it's sort of just a basic action game. Like I said, you can do different attacks that either stun or injure, and then of course you can do your vampire attacks to take out different enemies. One thing I really like about the game though is the fact that if the game ever feels kind of 
kind of hard and your character isn't leveled up enough, you can change that by leveling up dramatically. Like I said, you don't have to play the game as a vampire, but if you choose to play the game as a vampire and take out innocent citizens, you can do that. And that's where the game gets really fun, especially for me, because that was the part of the game I really enjoyed. So each citizen has their own XP meter and also has a mesmerize meter. If your character is leveled up enough to mesmerize that certain character, you can gain tons of XP all at once. And when you get all this XP at once, you can upgrade your attacks, you can upgrade your stamina, you can upgrade all of your cool stuff and make your character really powerful. So there was a point in the game where I just felt like I was too weak, I was having trouble with this battle, and I decided, you know what, maybe I'm going to embrace, embrace my vampire side. And I just started taking out random citizens in situations. And then my character just got so strong, and it was like, wow, this is really cool. Now, of course, that impacts the game throughout. So if you start killing random people and citizens in the town, basically the little towns start to have a meter that goes down. The lower the meter gets, the more that the town goes into peril. People won't go outside, side missions will be unavailable, new side missions may pop up, and new feral creatures will be in the area. So it's a really interesting balance to try to figure out the balance of what sort of character you want to be. And it definitely lends itself to multiple playthroughs of the game. Now, this game isn't a very short game either. Like I said, it's an action RPG that will probably take you anywhere from 25 to 40 hours, depending on your play style for the first playthrough. But once you sort of get the game down, you could probably get through it a bit quicker. But I really like just the open-end aspect of the game. I like being able to choose how I want to play the game, and I think that's the strongest point of this game. Because there are some weak points in the game that we'll get to in a bit, but I just really enjoyed embracing the dark side. And the combat system, it's okay, it gets the job done, it's fun enough, and the customization really makes it better in my opinion but I really liked it there's boss battles as well with like weird creatures that you find uh, in the sewers and stuff like that some enemies are some humans are like super powered and stuff it's just a really interesting game and I like all of the branching paths I liked all the side missions that sort of deviate from the main story of the game now as far as the issues with the game are concerned I'd say the first issue is it's definitely not the best looking game on whatever system you're playing it looks good enough but it's definitely a little rough around the edges and one part that I found kind of annoying was the fact that my game froze on me about four times while I was playing it for this review and it always seemed to freeze in a fighting stage I couldn't really replicate it to one-to-one -to -one where it would happen every single time during a single action but it froze on me about four times luckily the game does have an autosave feature and checkpoint system that's pretty good and it would bring me back to just where I was about at when I was playing the game so it wasn't super frustrating but it was annoying now a high point of the game for me was actually the voice acting in this game all the voice acting is top-notch and there's tons of it as there's tons of different citizens in each different area that you'll constantly talk to and have branching talking pads and story pads that will actually impact the game as well and mr. Hampton the patient we brought in how does he fare I gave him a sedative to help him sleep poor thing was in quite a state of shock the voice acting is top notch in this game. The controls are pretty solid, everything is mapped to different buttons when you get these vampire attacks, and the combat, like I said, it's not great, but it gets the job done. It's fluid enough. The story in the game is really good as well. Even the main story of the game that sort of has you figuring out who you are, why you are, what you are. And there was enough plot twists and whatnot to make it interesting throughout. So, Vampire is a game that I honestly feel is going to be a hidden gem. I don't think it's going to sell very well initially, because it's not a great game. It's probably Probably around a 7 or a 6.5 anywhere from a 6.5 to an 8 depending on how much you like the setting depending on how much you like games like this and of course vampire things but I could sort of foresee this being a hidden gem in the future because I can't really equate it to any other sort of game. I could foresee this game having a, no pun intended, big cult following at some point. You gotta remember, a game like Deadly Premonition, when it first came out, it looked it looked lacking. It was a weird game that a lot of people didn't understand, but that ended up becoming a huge cult hit for people, and people got really into that game. And while I'm not saying that vampires on the technical level of Deadly Premonition, or lack thereof, as Deadly Premonition felt like it was a generation behind, I could see this game having a similar cult following and being popular in smaller groups because it's a really interesting game. I like how they did the vampire things. I like how the gameplay takes place and I like how big and open things can be. Maybe not necessarily within the world but in the story itself and in the gameplay style you can implement that really suits your tailored needs. So I had a lot of fun with vampire honestly. I could foresee myself doing subsequent playthroughs of the game because it's just unique. It's something interesting and it's something that I think people may over 
overlook. If you're not a fan of darker games, you may want to wait for a price drop. As I said, it's not the best looking game and there does seem like there's a few technical issues, but it's a solid game overall. A game that I'm glad I played and a game that I definitely want to play more of. So those are my thoughts on Vampire. I played it on the Xbox One S. It is available, of course, on the PS4 and Steam and it is Xbox One X enhanced. So if you have an Xbox One X, it probably looks a little better and is a little smoother. But yeah, Vampire, pretty cool game and a game that I think you guys should check out. Maybe a rental through Gamefly, or if you're a fan of darker things, you could pick it up, and I think you would have a good time with it. So let me know in the comments section down below if you have played Vampire, or if you've been interested in it and just sort of on the fence, and if this review helped you, you know, sort of pick out whether you want this game or not. And as always, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. I'm doing all sorts of reviews on here, Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and of course retro stuff, and I do a lot of new stuff as well. And as always, if you really enjoy the video, be sure to check out all the links in the description description box down below. We got Patreon, t-shirts, social media, all sorts of ways to keep up to date with the world of RGT85, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Later. I want to suck your blood.